Did you know that video games have cutscenes? Yeah, you probably did. But did you know there are many interesting facts and or glitches about GTA 5 cutscenes? I mean, yeah, in a general way you probably knew that, but I can guarantee you haven't seen every single one of them that exists in this video. Most missions despawn irrelevant objects from the area so they do not mess up the cutscenes. The mission Father Son is different in that it does not do this for all objects. Shit, I just came by to see if there's something I can help you with. I see you doing well for yourself. I was just lost in an 80s movie fantasy. <laughs> yeah, I can see you spend a lot of time there. It's called capitalism. On the mission Blitz play, it is possible to open the armored car without triggering the cutscene, revealing there's nothing inside. This obviously creates a disconnect with the cutscene when you trigger it normally. Everyone out, let's go! Fuck it, yeah! If when walking into friend request, you jump, bring up your phone and ragdoll, it'll enable you to walk back out the door, and this will cause a duplicate Lester to appear in the cutscene. You need my help. I haven't been a good friend for you, Lester. I know that. I Shut up a minute. I'm getting an eye find alert. That little college boy sack of shit, phony fuck. Well, now it's payback time, you lying turd. The hell are you talking about? Get out of here! Please excuse me. I've got something shameful to do. On the mission complications, when you steal the car from the garage and Michael pops up, it is possible to threaten him with your gun. That's a 9mm semi-automatic pushed against your skull. Don't look around. Take me where you're going. Hey, come on, man. This was a repo job. God, take me where you were going. Using a dog from the surrounding area, it is possible to have Michael die just as he enters the mission derailed. This creates an unusual result for the cutscene. <laughs> End up here. Trevor about? I'm talking about gold. Yeah! Oh, this better be fucking good! Oh. Oh. Jesus. Fuck. Ah! Oh. Man, we've talked about this hygiene thing before, bro. I invite you into my home, this is how you repay me? It's like living with a fucking horny skunk. The mission derailed does not remove characters from the area when the cutscene starts. This means that you can place characters within the scene that shouldn't be there. What went wrong with my life? Trevor about? Tell Trevor. The monthly train is coming through. What monthly train? The monthly train. Where have you two been? Getting some fresh air. During the smart jewel store heist, while throwing the gas into the vents, it is possible to jump off the roof just before the cutscene starts, leading to a delayed death. That was it. They going out. You love her. Well, I, I love her a lot. I just, I wasn't thinking it was... Well, think about it like this. I mean, I always say that... Let's go. Let's do this! Come on! There are a handful of cutscenes that are unexpectedly shorter depending upon how you enter the mission. For example, here on Chop, the scene of Franklin walking to the door can be avoided by starting the mission from the side of the house. But you know what? It's getting to be a bit much. I have no idea how you cope. Oh, of course I say that poor boy is live. But you know what? It's getting to be a bit much. I have no idea how you cope. Another example is the mission Father Son. It is possible to avoid the cutscene of Michael walking into his house by avoiding the yellow marker and walking in yourself. If you destroy the benches before going to meet Lester for the first assassination mission, it makes the cutscene very awkward. Did Michael tell you about Life Invader? Oh shit, y'all two did that? Planning lies, forging evidence, anything we can do to take the battle back to these turds. After the cutscene, normally Lester remains sitting so you don't leave together and raise suspicion. Now, he walks off immediately. He doesn't go anywhere of note, but he does have a very strange animation whenever he turns a corner.
This final scene for the third way is quite interesting because it was used in the trailer for the game but in a completely different context. So now what? The GTA 5 trailer presents this situation occurring on the mission Blitz play instead of the third way. The game features not one, but three would be heroes. So now what? So now what? If you go to the end of some missions without triggering the end cutscene, the NPCs you are supposed to meet will often be caught in strange loops as they wait. Here on Architect Plans with a Wanted level, for example, Michael has an invisible phone and Lester is typing through his laptop. Obviously, this would normally not be viewable as the door is meant to activate the cutscene, but cannot because of the wanted level. A similar situation happens at the end of Deep Inside, where if you get out of your car without activating the waypoint, Devon dances in an endless loop. Entering into each of these missions will have you receive some dialogue before the cutscene actually begins. I was wondering when you'd show up. I was dead. Praise be. Guess you weren't very dead. You need my help. For some reason, if you hold up your phone going into any of these missions, the dialogue will be skipped and the cutscene will just immediately play. You need my help. <coughs> At the end of the Blitz play heist, when Michael goes to meet Devin Weston for the first time, it is possible to shoot both of his guards before starting the cutscene, and their dead bodies will exist throughout. Got a package for Devin Weston. Package for Mr. Weston? Have a good one, boys. At the end of the mission Nervous Run, it is possible to not land your plane on the runway and instead just fly it directly into the hangar. I'm sorry, Interestingly, in the cutscene, it'll show your plane as levitating without any wheels. There are a handful of cutscenes that were changed for the final release, some because they were likely considered too graphic, but with mods, these can be put back into the game even if they are unfinished. For example, in the release version of the confrontation with Molly, there's no real cutscene that plays. We simply have our camera as Molly is sucked into the jet engine. This is very different in the cutscene that was originally meant to be here. I think you need some help right now! Save me from this horror! Hey, come on! Look out! Ah! Oh, that didn't have to happen! Oh man! Fuck me! Another cutscene that saw significant changes was Michael's confrontation with the janitor on the mission cleaning out the bureau. In the release version of the cutscene, Michael merely talks to the janitor to convince him to give up his stuff. The cut version of this cutscene is far more violent. Another beta cutscene shows that repossession once ended at Franklin's house rather than the car wash and had a completely different bike. You a psychopath. You done finally fucking lost it. Nigga, that's that Apache blood in me, homie. You ain't lucky I ain't do a flying tomahawk and scalp they motherfucking ass. We can't repo the assets of a dead man, big sitting cheap asshole. Nigga, and we ain't going to neither, nigga. I'm gonna keep this motherfucker for myself. Tell Simeon we couldn't recover. You fucking tell him, you fucking moron! On the mission friend request, Michael watches a live presentation where he then takes out the CEO. The illusion of it being live is shattered if you wait until nighttime before going to Michael's house to watch the presentation. Despite it being nighttime, the so called live presentation will still be showing in the day. Oh, hold on a second. You. I think someone's trying to talk with me. Hello? Oh! Oh, Jesus! Whoa! Let's... Whoa! 
Additionally, I'm sure most of you haven't seen the cutscene that plays if Michael doesn't call the phone in time to take out Jay Norris. At around this point in my presentation, there was meant to be a call from my product team to introduce the device. But we're experiencing some technical difficulties. I hate to keep you waiting any longer, but trust me, it's worth it. And don't worry, I will fire several people for this. Destroying this bench before starting the mission Eye in the Sky reveals Franklin's core strength. Put up your hand and stand where I can see you! Alright, you got me, homie! On the Polito score setup, a cutscene plays showing Trevor and Michael waiting for Lester. Destroying this bench before it plays has interesting results. Ah. What? I'm gonna break your fucking fingers, you don't knock that shit off! Well, please, alright? You'd alleviate the boredom. It is possible to do the mission long stretch very early in the game, but you can actually leave it until just before the Blitz play heist if you really want to. This means that it is possible to do it after Franklin has already moved out of the house with Aunt Denise, making the cutscene dialogue no longer make sense. I mean, what the hell going on here? Wait a minute, Franklin, what are you doing here? I live here. On the mission case in the jewel store, after you've scoped out your highest target, you are required to drive Lester back to his factory. If before you drive back, you place some C4 on your car, which you can obtain from the map, you can achieve an interesting effect because you can blow up this C4 after hitting the final waypoints. I don't work with The mission is already technically over, but the game has to warp you back for this separate part where you pick your highest preference. If it did not do so, the game would be locked because you'd be unable to progress. Oh, yes, huh? good, good. There is a strange bug that occurs when you attempt to leave a mission replay of the third way. Man, imagine a fucking scenario that will fuck things up the worst. This bug occurs when you get to the second half. Mission failing, then pressing escape, then enter, would normally make it so you leave the mission, but it doesn't in this case. Take out our Rather than leaving the mission, for some reason the credits roll, and they aren't even the credits from the mission itself. These are the credits for ending A, something sensible. You'd know based off the music, but of course I can't play it for you because of content ID. On random events involving returning money to someone, if you switch weapon just as you get back to them, the game will have a visual glitch. The easiest way to guarantee the timing is correct is to spam change weapon using PC hotkeys. Here, man. Man, I'm a hypocrite. What a gentleman. And for once, I'm not being sarcastic. On the mission The Time Has Come, Franklin calls Lamar after Michael dies. He then interestingly quotes Michael from the mission Fresh Meat during his dialogue. Fuck, man, you know how it is, homie. You just start running and shit, then all of a sudden your legs give and you just can't run no more. Look, I know it sounds cold. I don't expect you to understand it. Not yet, but you will. Look, you wake up one day and, and your legs, they just give. You just can't run anymore. During the prologue heist, Michael, Brad and Trevor meet heavy resistance from the police. Despite it being left unanswered how the police learned of the robbery, one potential answer comes from noticing that one of the hostages does reach under a table in an earlier scene. Initially his hands are up, but the next time we see him he is reaching under the table. It could be that this is meant to suggest that he pressed the silent alarm. Hands behind your back! Come on, Nestor, we're giving you everything you want! I don't even think about it! Some missions require a certain time of day for them to make logical sense, and thus a cutscene will play progressing time forward if you start the mission at the wrong time of day. Rockstar seemed to forget to do this for the multi-target assassination mission, as we are required to take out some jurors, two of which, even at midnight, will be working out at the beach and cleaning windows on the side of a building. There seems to be a somewhat unfinished feature related to the prostitutes, which can be seen when you take one to one of your safe houses. Can we go somewhere a bit more private? Oh. 
I'm never going to get used to exercise. That was a fairly anticlimactic transition. There is of course no evidence inside of anything actually occurring. And while this does work at Franklin and Trevor's first safe houses, it doesn't work at their subsequent ones. Not now. I gotta go find some real money. Sorry, man. Mm, not now. Not in the mood. What the hell is wrong with you? On the mission long stretch, there is a cutscene that plays when you first enter the ammunition. Ammunition. Armorer to the stars. Surprisingly, this entire cutscene will replay every single time you gain and lose the cops during this section. Ammunition. Armorer to the stars. <gasps> Ammunition. Armorer to the stars. At the end of the mission the third way, Trevor is tasked with taking out Steve Haynes. While the game expects you to use a standard weapon, if you use a rocket, the cutscene of his death changes slightly. You can trigger the derailed getting on the train cutscene as many times as you want before the train escapes. After your mission fail, falling off the train immediately fails you. The outfit that you are wearing is taken into mission replays. This is even true of scuba gear. So good to see you. So good. Hold me. <laughs> yeah, look, man. It wasn't easy picking a winner. <laughs> man, fuck this employee of the month shit, homie. I'm sitting up here trying what to get us- What you mean, fuck this employee of the month shit, man? When it's some shit to be won, goddammit, I want it. I don't give a fuck what it is. On the mission Eye in the Sky, if from the start you use Franklin's power to continually interrupt the dialogue between him and Trevor, it will play over the cutscene at the end. You know, if this beauty was a woman, I'd have to break my dog. 20 and Devin under. Damn, man, I just stick to drive, right? Hey, tell me something. You know how many of these things they made? Man, I hit no oh, shit like you, ten. Man. No, not like hurt. ten, man. Ah, exactly not? ten. Oh, wow, man, you one of them type shit, of dudes, man, huh? Tell like you something. How'd you like to drive a car This girl, man, she got balls, dog, but... Parking a blimp on top of Lester's factory and then starting the mission cleaning at the bureau will cause you to mission fail during the cutscene. We're about to do something really, really bad. So I need to present myself as a proper textile magnet. The cutscene will play on and small little bits of the blimp will be seen throughout. You can of course just skip through the cutscene and continue the mission like normal. On some occasions the blimp doesn't explode and that is also fairly funny. On the mission Hang 10, a cutscene shows an argument between Deborah, Floyd and Trevor, eventually resulting in a black screen that is meant to signify that Trevor has done something to Floyd and Deborah. It turns out, however, if you skip the cutscene during that black screen, the game gets confused. You people are not very fucking nice! <laughs> Normally, of course, this should start the mission in truth. Trevor meets with Wade and they drive to the strip club, but Wade is nowhere to be seen. The only way to progress in the mission now is to kill yourself to spawn Wade and then drive to the strip club. Oh, I know exactly where to take you. The mission monkey business has Trevor, Franklin and Michael meet at a pier before breaking into a facility. Using Trevor or Franklin, it is possible to trigger the mission while under this pier for interesting results. Hey, what's up? Oh, hey man. I was wondering, have you heard from your family? What's going on, ladies? Hello, Trevor. Business, Michael, business. All right. Despite the graphical issues, the cutscene will play as normal, although Franklin will be missing regardless of who you started with. The color eventually does come back, and the boat the characters are meant to get into seems to be invisible. And you, get in. You're driving. Go down the coast. The facility's a few clicks south of us. 
At the end of Sky in the Port, it is possible to kill Wade before the cutscene starts. This will result in two copies of Wade, although one will be dead. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> there, there, Wade. Look, 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 look. Betty, you're just not cut out for honest work, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no one understands why Floyd expects her to use him so. If you equip Trevor with cargo pants and then start a mission replay for Buy the Book with Michael, Trevor will have no feet for the duration of the mission. The hell are you doing? Oh, nothing! The fuck is wrong with you? Uh, I got abandonment issues. I see a shrink once a week. Nothing like meeting a bunch of creeps from the government in a quiet building for someone to grow balls. The man who owns it, he works at the consulate. If when chasing after the boat on Father Son, you stop at the Red Bridge and blow up your car, you will get to see an odd bug. Shit! I ain't jumping God, here, getting man. away! Ah! Dad, don't be all butthurt! At least you got me out of there! You listen to me, you little shit! That kid just jumped off the hood of a moving car to save your ass, and now he's gone! And so's my boat! It is possible to glitch one of the prologue cutscenes by shooting the getaway vehicle until petrol leaks out and then shooting the petrol the same time as you get into the car. Shut the fuck up and drive! Woo! Did you see that shit? I fucking put that bitch's face against the glass. Did you see that? Yeah, you're a real <laughs> stout. Oh. Oh. Fuck you! Too. I have played GT 5's prologue literally thousands of times, but I have never caught this mistake. The gang has three bags, two black, one tan, with Michael holding the tan bag. This is the case all the way until they get into the car, at which point the bags vanish from the car. When they get out of the car, all three bags are black, until they are walking again where one becomes tan. This is until Michael and Brad get shot, at which point the bags are all black again when they're on the ground. On the mission complications, Franklin is ordered by Michael to drive back to Simeon's lot. If you disobey, you will receive a cutscene that few people get to see. This don't look like the way to no credit alley to me. Shit, man, with traffic and all, this way is fast. Don't move, kid. On the side mission Vime with the Last Act, Trevor is tasked with either freeing or killing a famous movie star that was kidnapped by two elderly fans. It turns out the game isn't all that picky in regards to where you release him. There must be something you want. Other than a cheeseburger, a cold beer, and you shutting the hell up, <clears throat> I've decided to accept your kind offer on the understanding that you keep your mouth shut. Unless, of course, you want to be returned to uh, Sir Fruit Cake and Lady Screwloose back there. No, 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 I, I promised it. Uh, take it all. Just, just let me go. Hey, keep making terrible movies, Al. There are many cutscenes in the game that people will likely never see because they occur under unusual circumstances. For example, if you fail to leave the jewel store during the heist, you can see the gang get arrested. Time's up! We gotta go! The cops are coming. You've been warned. Get out of there now or you will be arrested and imprisoned. Go! Get out with your hands up! Shit! Get off the fight! Yeah, 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 I get it. Need that? Took too long. Down, down slow. I was out, you know. Got you, motherfuckers. On the mission by the book, if you torture Mr. K for too long, you'll be prompted to use a syringe to bring him back to life. I suspect most people have not seen the cutscene that occurs if you do not do this. Now, hold on, hold on, what, what, hold on. Forget it. He's fucking dead. Oh, yeah, poor bastard, man. You are a fucking moron. Whoa. Hey, I just spent the past few hours torturing a seemingly innocent guy to death, and I don't even know why I did it. So does that make me a fucking moron? You're going down, punk. At the exact moment I get bored with you, your little racket will end. Yeah. 
Yeah, you love those fucking tough guy lines, don't you, huh? Fuck you. Under normal circumstances, should your character pull out a weapon in a cutscene, it will showcase any modifications you've made to it via ammunition. However, there are some exceptions. If you place the use of a mere luxury, gilded gun metal, or etched wood finish on any weapon, these weapons will appear as the default tint and lose all attachments when shown in cutscenes. These weapons will of course get back their modifications right after. The O'Neill brothers. The O'Neill brothers, huh? Yeah. The Mission Crystal Maze has six different entry cutscenes based on which direction you approach the O'Neill's farmhouse. Most interestingly is that the game will acknowledge if you come from above and will start with an overhead shot. It's that psycho, Trevor! <laughs> On the earlier PC patches, there was a bug related to benchmarking. When you activate benchmarking, it takes your character and moves them through a bunch of different scenarios to see your FPS. Before it was fixed, the game didn't despawn missions that were in these areas, so you could start Tanya's missions within the benchmark if you hadn't done them. The game tries to move you to the next location to test your FPS, but the cutscene does not allow us. The cutscene of course does eventually end, so you get relocated. You can then hit retry to go back into the mission. It doesn't end here however, you can then retry one more time and actually do the mission with Tanya in the benchmark. Drop it in the marked area. I tried to spawn additional missions on the map but was not successful and the benchmark did eventually end. I think we can all agree that that was the best video you've ever watched in the last half an hour. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos just like it, check out my channel. I got all the best stuff. Trust me. I wish you all the best.